Hey, what's up everyone? This is Ryan Sims, and in this video, we're going to be talking about color harmony and how you can achieve that using selective color. See you in Photoshop. All right, so here we are in Photoshop. We've got our subject, which is this really cool Viking warrior princess type character. And she's in this really cool Viking village. And you've got some very cool tones in there, some like greenish, bluish, teal type tones. And our subject doesn't quite match the background. So when you're color grading your image, you either need to make your background match your subject or your subject match your background. In this case, we're going to make our subject match our background. So there are many ways that we could color grade, but today we're going to be talking about selective color. So I'm going to go ahead and select my Viking layer and I'm going to go up to selective color. And I am going to click this little button right here that is going to clip our adjustment layer to our subject layer. And then I'm going to click on this little box right here and that's going to make the adjustment. So this is the menu that we need to be in in order to do that. And so if you click right up here where it says colors in this little drop down menu, you're going to see all these different colors. You've got reds, yellows, green, cyans, blues, magentas, whites, neutrals, and blacks. You're going to see the biggest change right here in your blacks and neutrals. But you're also going to see some pretty big changes in the reds and yellows because those are the primary colors in her skin tone. And so normally what I like to do is I like to start with the neutrals first because that's where you're going to see your biggest change. So in each category, you're going to have cyans, magentas, yellows, and blacks. And you're not going to break Photoshop by just playing around with the sliders. So that's one good way to kind of figure out what they do. If you move the science to the left, you're going to get more red. If you move it to the right, you're going to get more of this greenish, bluish color. If you move more to the left, you're going to get green. More to the right, you're going to get more of that magenta. Move the yellow slider to the left, you're going to get the opposite of yellow, which is blue. And then if you move it to the right, you're going to get yellow. And then with the blacks, same thing. You're going to get more of this lighter tone here in the neutrals versus more of a darker tone here to the right. So normally what I like to do is I just like to eyeball it. I'll start with the cyans, kind of move it over a little bit to the right. I don't want to move it too far, maybe just a tiny bit to still maintain some of the skin tones, something like that. I don't think I necessarily need to play with this one too much, but if you want to, maybe just like a negative one, something like that. Yellows, I may make them a little bit cooler to match the background. And then if you want to mess with these, you can, but I don't think I'm going to. I'm going to leave it right there at zero. And if you click on this little eyeball here just to see a before and after, we've already made a huge difference in our color grading. Now that's one way to do it, just to quote unquote eyeball it. There is a more specific way, and normally what I like to do in order to achieve that more specific way is I like to create an eye help layer. And how I do that is I create a new layer. So I'm going to hit Control Shift N, and I'm just going to name this gray, our gray layer. So there you go, you got a gray layer. I'm gonna hit Shift F5, and that's gonna bring up this little fill menu that's gonna make our layer 50% gray. And you can just go ahead and hit OK. So now we have a 50% gray layer. I'm gonna change the blending mode of this gray layer right here to luminosity. And I'm gonna bring up a hue and saturation layer right here. Click on that. And I'm gonna take the saturation all the way up to 100 to where you have this really funky, colorful, saturated image like you see here. Now we're not gonna leave it there. So I'm gonna go ahead and select both of these. I'm gonna hold my control key down, click on both layers, make sure they're selected and hit control G. And I'm just gonna name that I Helper. And basically what this is gonna do is this is gonna allow me to see what colors are in my image and how I can bring more harmony to those colors. So going back to my selective color, I wanna click this little box right here, double click that, and that's gonna bring back up our menu here. Now, if I were to take this cyan and move it all the way to the right, you can see we've got a lot of color harmony going on, but if I turn off the eye helper layer, you can see that doesn't look right. She's way too green, doesn't look good. So I'm gonna control Z to undo that, you still want to maintain some of this skin tone just a little bit. So what I like to do is I like to use this eye helper just to kind of see what colors need to be adjusted, but then I like to turn it off to actually see what's happening to the image as well. 
So if I turn the selective color off, that's where we were. You could see everything's red. It's completely contrasted to the background. And we don't want that. We want harmony. So if I turn it back on, you can see that we have a lot more of that, right? We've got the greens and the yellows. You see a little bit of the greens, tiny bit of yellows right here. But then mainly a lot of this like cyan and blues that we're getting a lot more in her outfit here. So as we continue that trend, let's start with the skin tone. Start up here with the reds. Maybe move this slider over just a little bit. And I'm going to go back to my eye helper layer. Turn it off just to kind of see where I'm at. Very good. And continue on with this process. Don't know if I'm going to move this too much, but literally we're just kind of sliding and it's kind of trial and error. You're not going to break Photoshop by just playing around with these sliders. So by all means, play around with them. And I like to turn that off just to see my progress. And then I'll move on to the yellows. Kind of play around with the slider just a little bit. See what's going on. Something like that right there. May not mess around with the blacks too much. And again, just kind of going back and checking. And if you want to mess with these other colors, you absolutely can. But since I know that the primary colors in this subject are going to be red and yellow, those are going to be the main ones I touch. The other ones are going to be your white, neutrals, and blacks. So let's go ahead and go to white. If I want to make these highlights a little bit more cool, I'll go this way with the cyans. Maybe a little bit more on the green side with magenta, more on the blue side with yellow, something like that. Go ahead and click that off just to see where I'm at. And if I want those highlights to be a little bit more poppy, I can bring it more to the left side of the blacks or I can leave it where it's at. I think I might just kind of go a little bit in the halfway mark, something like that right there. And you can tell we've already brought so much more color harmony to this image. If you think it blends in way too much, okay. Just drop the opacity down. Maybe start at like 75% and go from there. Maybe you like a little bit more skin tone in your image, but that's just a quick way that we can color grade our image using selective color. Selective color can be a really powerful tool in Photoshop. It gives you a lot of creative and dynamic range when it comes to messing with the sliders of the all the different colors in the color wheel. Don't be afraid to get in there and play around with those sliders and really experiment around with it. And just remember, the eye help layer that I showed you how to do can be really powerful as well as far as guiding your eyes in the right direction of what does and doesn't look correct because you're actually getting to see what actual colors are in your background image and how you can harmonize that with your subject. And just be sure to flip back and forth. That way you don't go too far in one direction. You want to kind of maintain a little bit of that original color so that way you don't completely lose the skin tone but at the same time you just want to make sure that that's balanced with your background so everything blends quite nicely so i hope you enjoyed that video make sure that you like and subscribe to our channel to see more content like this be sure to comment in the comment section below on what you would like to see us work on next for more information be sure to check out cghacks.com so until next time create more say less stay creative <laughs>